everyone, welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new episode of Today's Youth and today we will be meeting with a multitasking young lady. Her name is Sara Al-Amin. She's working as an African affairs journalist at one of the Egyptian's news, uh, Egyptian newspapers rather. Uh, she will tell us about her experience uh, as a journalist and her experience specifically in community service in Africa. Thank you very much for joining us, Sara. Thank you for having me. Uh, Sarah, I would like you to tell me first about your um, passion for community service. Uh, since I was a kid, my, my father and my mother, um, they were opening the, making us watch the news and think um, how hard Africa um, is suffering. Uh, so I had this passion from my family, trying to help them to create a different and better life. Mm -hmm. um, my main goal was creating a uh, water supply because water supply is not just water. For, for us, it's, we, we couldn't relate to this topic because uh, most of us um, having tap water, which is uh, healthy and uh, people can drink it without getting sick. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, it's a, it's a whole different story. Um, Lake of water affects the education system, affects the women's health, affects even the, politi the politics. Uh, so it was a major um, concern for me to, to try to change this by creating the butterfly effect, if, if, if I'm allowed to say so. Um, I don't think Happy Africa made huge projects, but what I'm sure of, it made huge uh, difference. Yes. Uh, you established an organization uh, with the title A Happy Africa. Tell me more about the objectives of this organization uh, and the, your main achievements. Um, let me start with the achievements, then <laughs> we'll go to the objectives. Uh, we, monthly, we dig more than one borehole. Um, the, the depth of the borehole depend between 40 and 60 meters. Uh, deep, which is um, the standard in um, in West Africa, mm -hmm. um, and we we do some feeding programs, health com health uh, programs, um, and we mostly depend on the donations of the Egyptians living abroad, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Egyptians in Egypt. Uh, our objective is creating happy Africa, trying mm -hmm. by leaving the butterfly effect. Uh, we, we accept a lot of volunteers, mostly between the age of 16 and 21, um, so that when I die or I get sick, I get old, I couldn't work anymore, um, we have someone to, to lead and... Um, continue, to continue. continue the yes, yes. Uh, tell me more about the donations. Uh, how do you raise funds? How do you collect donations to support you in this uh, actually very interesting project? It's a long story. Um, I work in the community service since I was 16, maybe. Then I started collecting donations myself, which, is, which were illegal. But at this point, I was collecting from my family and friends. So it yes. was not a big deal. Uh, then when it started to get a big, on a bigger scale, um, we established as a certified organization. It's uh, certified under the Kenyan law, uh, where, we, where we mostly work. Uh, and wherever we go, we get the certification, we get the bank account, the legal uh, persons who can um, legalize collecting donations because collecting donations is not um, um, an easy job to do. You have to mm -hmm. go through a lot of paperwork and mm -hmm. etc. Right. You were also able to give uh, some uh, medical, necessary uh, medical equipment or uh, drugs maybe to uh, some people in need over there. We did more than that. Uh, what you said is, is, is very true. Uh, but we did more than that. We, we did a lot of sur uh, sur surgeries, uh, especially for uh, kids. We, we, we mainly care about uh, changing, changing the life of the kids because tomorrow they're going to be the youth afterwards they're going to be the leaders of the country so yeah. uh, creating healthy uh, lifestyle and a healthy environment for them is uh, one of our biggest concerns mm -hmm.
What are the next projects that Happy Africa will work on? We, we will keep and continue working on the boreholes because it's, it's a huge matter. Uh, imagine if you couldn't live without water for uh, a week. Could you survive? Of course not. Mm. Imagine these people are living with no clean water more than 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. the, the, her health conditions are very bad. Uh, kids couldn't, can't go to school because they cannot bath, they, cannot, um, they are mostly sick. So I care about uh, continuing uh, digging the bow holes. And then uh, one of my dreams is, is um, establishing a school. Um, we're working our, we are working on our documents and mm. uh, soon it's going to be uh, ready. I don't know how soon, mm. but soon once, once it's going to ready, we're going to be with you telling mm. you the whole story again. Right. Uh, are you planning to work in other African countries uh, or work inside Egypt? I mean, uh, are you uh, planning to expand your community service to uh, inside Egypt and other African countries? Uh, we, we have been working in more than um, three different African countries uh, up now, up, up now, until now. Uh, but working in Egypt is a whole different story because uh, the law is very restricted when it comes to collecting donations. I cannot go to this or I will go behind bars. Uh, so for now, until we get our documents ready and certify and we get our Happy Africa certified, we cannot um, get this done. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Minister of Immigration, Dr. Nabila Makram, uh, uh, showed great interest in what you're do uh, doing and uh, she's uh, uh, encouraging you to continue. Would you tell me more about this? Uh, um, she's one of my role models since I was maybe 25. Uh, since I, I, I um, knew her name and mm -hmm. see her work, saw her work. Um, so meeting her was just like a kid meeting his superman or something. Mm -hmm. It was amazing and she's, um, she's teaching me a lot. She's teaching me how to be practical, how to be nice, how to be kind and more, more important, how to be professional and documenting everything and not getting myself into a, a situation where uh, people can question my intentions mm -hmm. or ask me um, questions that I don't want to answer. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's amazing. I'm glad I'm blessed to meet her. Mm -hmm. uh, how did the support she's given you, uh, along with Dr. Maya Morsi, encourage you more to continue and expand? Uh, when you're working unnoticed, it's an issue. Yeah, you feel like you're not um, uh, appreciated enough. When your country notices you, it's a whole different level. Uh, it feels like you're, you're not um, doing what you're doing for nothing. Uh, you're doing it for a, a good purpose and um, that's it. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, well, uh, you studied mass communication, yes, right? Uh, tell me why did you choose uh, mass communication in specific to study? It's my passion. Um, I believe that um, writers and journalists can change the world if they are honest and uh, targeting the right targets, which is helping others and helping their communities, mm -hmm. not just after the trends and whatever we see in media right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I wanted to, to make a change since I was a kid. So one of the ways of making a change uh, is uh, by writing and by journal, like being a journalist. Mm -hmm. And this happened, actually I saw this by my own eyes, uh, when my page just started published publishing and uh, the story people start talking about Africa, asking me questions, um, giving me ideas actually, mm. um, even giving me ideas. So um, journalism can change as well as community work. Mm -hmm. Both of them can work hand in hand and make a, a big impact and different. Uh, Sarah, you're actually working as an African affairs uh, journalist. You're uh, specialized in African affairs. Yes, Tell me more about your work and uh, your career and your aspirations for uh, the future in your career. Uh, I have been a journalist for more than a decade now. I, I think for more than, more than 10 years. My first uh, published article was in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went through a, a, whole, a whole long journey, mm -hmm. um, but writing about African affairs, meeting um, the people you care about and uh, you know a lot about them and you're willing to know more, um, it makes like 
it makes me feel like I'm, I'm, I'm going to a vacation. I'm not going to an office and working. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm living my dream. Yes. Uh, tell me, how far did your experience as a journalist affect you on the personal level? Uh, it made me single, tough, independent. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. Um, uh, okay, you also have a, an experience in writing. You yes. wrote a, a series of books especially written for kids. Tell me more about this, uh, this series of books. Uh, as I said earlier, um, it's not like I lost hope in our generation, but I want to focus more on kids because they are uh, tomorrow's men and women um, which ho who are going to carry um, the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, so by writing for them and educating them about Africa, uh, they are going to um, understand that we are different, yet we can unite and um, make a change. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, well, Sarah, we're just going to go for a short break and we'll be right back. Come back and uh, see with my guest, uh, Sara. Tell me, uh, how do you see the great attention given by the uh, Egyptian leadership by President Sisi to the youth? And uh, of course, the youth conferences that are taking place. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of youth empowerment we've been seeing during the past years. How do you see the significance of this and its impact on the youth? Uh, it's made me be with you today. Uh, Happy Africa uh, proposal was written in the hotel room where I was invited for World Youth Forum 2018. Um, so the, the, the World Youth Forum um, allowed us to interact with uh, youth from all over the world where we can exchange ideas and create something together. So you attended the, the World yeah. Youth Forum in 2018? Uh, Happy Africa was born in uh, World Youth Forum uh, hotel room uh, in 2018, so I can see the impact on myself. It made me be with you and it made me uh, do what I did. Uh, getting um, in, in, in depth with the youth and interacting with different um, generations, it made us understand that uh, the, the people who are older or the elderly are not our enemies. They, they just know more, yes. so you're willing to learn from them. Uh, as well as looking in, into Africa, uh, which is, I can see, uh, it's getting um, a lot of uh, attention from uh, the presidents and the ministers and the writers and everyone. Mm. Um, I can say it's too late, but it's never too late. Um, this is going to create uh, an impact soon enough. Mm. Uh, everyone in Egypt is going to feel that um, he, they are having brothers and sisters um, around the borders. We're gonna feel more safe. We're gonna get. We're gonna have an ease uh, of accessing um, food, transportation, whatever they can. They have. We can get, and whatever we have, they can get. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of a union. Yes. Right, uh, Sarah. Since you attended the youth, the World Youth Forum in 2018, uh, tell me more about the significance of gathering youth together from different countries, from different cultures in one place. Uh, what's the impact of this uh, on the youth, in your opinion, uh, in creating a bond among uh, youth from different countries and exchanging, of course, uh, experiences and uh, views on different topics? It was an eye-opening for me as I had um, a lot of uh, meetings with different ambassadors of uh, African uh, countries. I, I am saying ambassadors, they are not officially ambassadors, uh, but in my opinion they are um, holding their country's flag and the heritage and blue. Um, I had um, a lot of friends and, and I ha still have them until now. Um, we talked, we discussed, we created. Um, sometimes we didn't agree, sometimes we agreed. Uh, this was an eye-opening. It made me understand that uh, there is plenty of different cultures all over the earth. Mm -hmm. It's not just me and my culture. Right. Uh, Sarah so definitely faced a lot of obstacles and challenges that you overcame. Uh, I mean, throughout your uh, career life as a journalist, uh, throughout your community service, uh, you initiated uh, uh, Happy Africa, and uh, which is an organization uh, working on community service in African countries. Uh, tell me about the challenges that you faced and how did you overcome them? Um, 
we faced a lot of challenges. One of them was creating the papers and getting certified. Um, in, when you're in a foreign country, you're not a citizen. So uh, you don't know where to go, who to go to. Uh, so this is what was my biggest challenge because without getting certified, I, couldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to collect donations. So there are um, no projects. Yeah. Uh, security, um, the security was not the best, we can say so. Mm -hmm. um, we overcome this. Uh, sometimes feeling, feeling um, lonely when you're living in a different country without your family, especially during the Corona time where um, when there was a, a, lock, a total lockdown, I couldn't fly back to Egypt. None mm -hmm. of my parents, none of my family um, could fly to me. So this is um, one of the worst couple of months I've ever been through. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get sick, when you're alone, it's a, it's a whole different story. Uh, you go to the hospital yeah. alone, you're very scared that they could inject you with something wrong you, or something um, that's having uh, viruses or you get mm -hmm. scared a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but my father taught me that uh, it's, it's okay to get scared. Mm -hmm. uh, but overcoming this uh, feeling is what makes you um, a good human being or yes. brave human H being. How did this experience strengthen you on the personal level? It changed me. It changed the view of things in my eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, before the experience, I, I could feel shy if I was not wearing the latest trends or the latest dress I saw on who and who. Uh, now I can wear whatever I want, I can eat whatever I want, I can go wherever I want. It made me understand that the luxury I had uh, is not uh, there for everyone. Mm -hmm. So it made me a little bit down to earth. Mm -hmm. uh, it, ch it, it made me want to give more because when you see a lot of needy people, you want to give more, so you work harder, you, are, you, you learn, you, mm -hmm. you start to uh, try to make the, their lives better. Yes. Uh, what would you like to tell youth uh, about persistence and perseverance to achieve your goals? Okay. Uh, for 10 years, I wanted to write uh, about African affairs. I only uh, started writing after nine years from me writing the first article in 2012. Uh, so it took, it took me nine years. Um, but what made me um, be where I want to be or live my dream is I never stopped knocking the doors. I never stopped trying. I never stopped reading. I never stopped asking people, what should I do? What am, am I doing wrong? Um, and everything happens is a practice for something bigger. Mm -hmm. And um, what made me uh, the way I am is uh, one of the reasons is volunteering. Yeah. So I encourage every dad and mom to let their kids fly and volunteer, no matter where, no matter f what for. Just let them be, be themselves. Let them uh, see what is the world um, outside of Egypt mm -hmm. uh, looks like, mm -hmm. how it is. They are going to come back loving their country more. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what happened to me, like I, I yeah. was a little bit like, uh, I want to travel, I, yeah. Then when I came back, everything in Egypt seemed amusing, seemed, seemed like funny, nice, lovely. Mm -hmm. So you give now a message to the parents. What message would you like to give to the youth from your place here? Um, keep knocking doors and just don't walk into, don't walk like, just like this. Walk with a target, walk mm -hmm. to a target, walk mm -hmm. um, with steady, small steps. No matter, it doesn't matter how long it's going to take. Uh, just go ahead. Go ahead. Do it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. don't wait until you're ready. You're never going to be ready. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be ready. You only get ready through the journey. Mm. Right. Uh, keep uh, knocking doors. Yes. Uh, uh, Sarah, since you're a journalist, an African affairs uh, specialized journalist, and at the same time you've been working uh, in African countries on community service, uh, tell me how important is it uh, to create a bond among African youth from different countries, and how can this be achieved? Um, this could be achieved through uh, gathering like World Youth Forum, conferences, uh, camping programs, volunteering programs, um, student exchanging programs, uh, and a lot more. Mm -hmm. 
Why it's important? Because the kid in university or in school now in um, South Africa, tomorrow he, ca he can be mm -hmm. the president. And the kids in, in Egypt now, tomorrow is going to be the president one day. So when they, they already know each other, when they already understand each other's uh, culture, I think uh, creating peace and uh, uniting um, Africa is going to be much more easy. Right. Uh, finally, Sarah, what are your plans and dreams for the future? Uh, I will just keep uh, continue writing and uh, volunteering for uh, such projects. Um, nothing more. I don't, I don't have anything else to care about right now. Right. Well, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Sara Al Amin, uh, African Affairs Journalist. Many thanks for joining us, and uh, all the me. best of luck. Thank you. And dear viewers, that brings us to the end of this edition of today's Youth. Don't forget to join us next week, same time. Till then, it's goodbye. Thank you.